Hello everyone, my name is Lucia Radetsky. I'm a Christian health coach and your servant today sharing the word of God with you and sharing this prophetic message that has come for some people that are listening to this video right now. So I have been having um, successive dreams with earthquakes and the first dream that I had, um, I received the information from the Holy Spirit that I needed to talk about this um, because it wasn't just for me. It wasn't just about my own situation. The Lord is constantly talking to me through dreams, but what He does is that later on He confirms through Scripture. And so today we're going to be talking about earthquakes in Scripture and what they mean. And in particular, because He was insisting on this message um, he gave me this other dream, uh, again an earthquake, and in this case I was able to um, bring my family to safety, right? I want to testify also um, for the ones who haven't heard my story yet that I have been in an 8.5 earthquake in Mexico some years ago, and uh, it's no joke. It's definitely one of the most terrifying experiences one can never feel. But here's the interesting thing. An earthquake is used in the Acts and chapter 16 verse 26 to free Paul from jail. So what is interesting is that this is also a way how sometimes we can be set free from our own self-imposed jail or a jail of sin, you know, a jail that keeps us bound to behaviors that we don't want to have, which have to do with self-doubt, with lack of confidence, we have to do with anger or have to do with contentiousness or addictions or any other thing, right? So those things that I just mentioned are prisons in a way, prisons, places where we feel chained, and not because of our own will, but we feel chained because we cannot do different, we cannot change that. So the thing is, fear sometimes is going to shake our foundation to the point that it's going to take us eventually to freedom. And the Lord has this way to, to do this sometimes, especially when, when, when it's time for an evil foundation to fall. And so here's the thing, what is an evil foundation? An evil foundation, I'm going to try to explain it very simple. It's, it's when we have built on something else that are not the principles of unconditional love of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so what's going to happen is that whatever we have built on, whether that is, for example, I don't know, or status or career or money or looks or blah, 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 whatever it is that we have built our confidence in, say you have built your security, your safety, and your confidence in all those superficial things, that's an evil foundation that oftentimes comes from um, your your mother's side, your father's side, your grand, 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 grands. So it's, it's a generational thing, right? That, that, for example, if you have a generational behavior or a generational um, even inheritance, we have good things and we have bad things, right? So in this case, an evil foundation maybe talking about generations of or family members or, or mindsets not aligned with the Lord Jesus Christ and align instead with other things as our source of love, peace, joy, security, which ultimately are going to fall. And we have seen it recently. It was so tragic to see, you know, all of these huge houses being completely swallowed by the flood and, and you know, how earthquakes can break a house in one minute. It's so terrible, honestly, to see. And we need to be ready because 
We know that we are in times when earthquakes are happening more often, and so it's predicted also that a big earthquake may happen. But here's what the Lord wanted me to say. I don't want to focus on an earthquake um, literally coming to pass, although that's not out of the you know, possibilities. We know that it's in relations and we possibly are in the end of times as so many of us feel. But here's the thing. This earthquake that I want to talk about today is not the physical one, but the spiritual, emotional and mental earthquake that the people of God, the children of the Most High, that he's calling back out of an evil foundation, out of a family that rejected Christ, maybe for many generations. He wants to call his children back, okay? People that may have been born um, originally in Jewish families or people that may have been born um, even in Christian families or families that had belonged in a way to the Lord. But for different hurts or different mindsets or persecution, even the Holocaust, whatever it is, the cows, they have been departing from the way, departing from the faith. They can, this can even go all the way through, um, you know, the, even the same apostles, right? And so the, the more interesting message that I have for you today is that there's going to be if it's not already happening, a shaking of that foundation. That foundation is going to fall. That's going to be destroyed. That thing that you are putting your faith in that is not Christ, it's going to be destroyed. But if you are building on the rock, if you are building on Jesus Christ, say you're building a marriage, for example, right? If you build it on your looks, your money, your success, your charm, it's not going to, it's going to fall eventually because it's not, it's not strong ground. That thing can change. You can lose it all. You can get old. You can lose leg, you know. Things change. But when you build on the rock, if you build that marriage, and I'm saying marriage can be anything else, can be career, whatever it is. If you build on the rock of Christ, no matter what flood, no matter what storm, no matter what earthquake comes, you're going to stay firm. And I know because I, I love... I love learning about permaculture and about buildings and about foundations. I love building. It's it's very interesting. It's amazing. And so I know a little bit about foundations and how important it is for a house to stand. And so thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, and this connects with this, this um, particular verse when the Lord says, a house divided cannot stand. Right? So he's helping you build that marriage, that career, that um, business, whatever it is that you're building, even your safety, if you're preparing for, for uh, you know, what's to come. He wants you to build on him, on the rock of Christ, which means building on what? Hmm? I'm listening. Put it down there in the comments. It's building on the faith. Of Christ, it's building on on that unwavering faith that no matter what others say, you know, ten people may come and say, "No, uh, your 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 wife or your husband is cheating," or ten people can come and say, "How come you want to build a business in these times? The the fin the financial the the finances are so unstable. You cannot invest. You cannot buy." Or you, you want to start that career and people are like, no, you can never earn any money with that. You're going to blah, 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 blah. If Christ called you to do that, if Christ is leading you to that marriage, to that career, to that business, it's because he has plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So trust in him. Build on the rock of his foundation and let the evil foundation be turned down apart. That means sometimes rejecting old beliefs. You know, maybe people that you love, well-intentioned people, may come with ideas, with cautions, with things that you may not need at this time because you need to build in the faith of Christ. And it may take a great deal of fear, darling. Ooh, it is something to... 
you know, shake you. You're going to experience some fear. You're going to experience a little bit of this instability in the meantime where everything that it doesn't serve you anymore is being thrown down. It's that earthquake that is going to shake your foundation and it's going to make so you are actually being set free. And I'm going to read to you the scripture so you get what I'm saying. And you being set free, you're not the only one who is going to be set free from that sinful nature from that activity from that mindset that trauma also that has been running your family that generational curse not only you are going to be set free but also some other people maybe are your friends maybe other family members but they're gonna be blessed abundantly even those wow thank you holy spirit this is powerful even those who were before in some way um Digamos, and they were they were actually helping to maintain in place that that bondage towards sin. They were helping reproducing that ideology and helping you live in that sin, helping you, you know, build that. They're also gonna be shaken because of your the transformation that the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life, the change, the chains that are gonna break for you are going to also set others free and this is key and i know i'm speaking right now to some people in terms of uh, kingdom marriage that there are people connected with you that have been part of this net and that they are all going to be set free not just you but they're going to be set free they're going to be set free of a lot of different trauma and a lot of pain that has been running in that family a lot of um, deception also that has been running and that you are going to be set free with all of these people too right so this is the word i want to share with you before i run out of battery and i want to acknowledge that it's around one something a.m in the morning so right now i'm a little bit like you know, after a long day of work, so give me some grace. It says, chapter 16, verse 25, the Philippian jail say, jailer saved. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They are in prison, right? Let's just remember that. And the prisoners were listening to them, other people that are also sharing that same prisoner lifestyle, prisoner of sin, prisoner of lies, prisoner of mindsets. Hmm? Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosened. Hallelujah, that's something to hear. Wow, this is amazing. And the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called him, called with a loud voice and saying, do yourself no harm for we are all here. Look at this, look at this, this is beautiful. This is gonna ring some bell for some of you that have ears to hear. Do yourself no harm for we are all here, okay? Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This is something that people may ask you at some point once you are saved or your foundations are being shaken. What must I do to be saved? The question of the million, right? This is the real question. This is the valuable question. And so they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. Praise the Lord. You and your household. This is the prophecy I want to send to you today. This evil foundation is shaking. It's falling down. It's done. It's over. There might be fear. There might be a moment of instability, a moment when you feel that you're a prisoner, that things seem so steady and that nothing can change. No, the Lord is sending right now a strong, strong spiritual earthquake 
That evil foundation is loosened, and now you're going to build on the rock of Christ that is going to come with believing in Jesus Christ, and your whole household will be free. Praise the Lord. I want to hear that. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of, two, of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set foot before them and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Whoa, this is truly, it, I, it makes me feel emotional, you guys. <laughs> I'm also very emotional, but this particularly gives me a lot, a lot of joy because look at this. This part when it says, He took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. So I'm hearing here that what the Lord is going to do to you and your household, your family and your people, your friends, He's going to wash your wounds. He's going to heal you. Some people are carrying wounds that had to do with the war, carrying wounds that had to do with trauma, carrying wounds that had to do with persecution, right? And now the Lord's coming and He's going to heal. He's going he's gonna to wash the stripes. He's going to bring this 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 power that he has and it reminds me what I'm writing about high sub right now and he, and it, it reminds me that power that has to cleanse how the Lord how the Lord was was you know comforted with high soap and, and vinegar be, right before he died to rose again then to give us victory because high soap has this spiritual power to cleanse and so it says here that that night he washed their stripes. He's talking about healing of your foundation, the healing of your whole family tree. The healing, it has to do with welcoming the grace of Christ into your life. Believing in Christ is going to bring so much blessing and favor to your family that you're going to be able to be healed from years and years and years of generational trauma. So you are truly, truly building on the rock now that no earthquake, no flood, no storm, no wind, nothing is going to be to tear your family apart. Nothing is going to be able to destroy your marriage, your business, your career, but overall things, your family, your mother, your father, your children, your grandparents, they're all going to be saved because they're going to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is prophetic. This is going to come to pass. I'm not exactly sure when because everybody has a different season when this prophetic word is going to come to pass, but I am speaking today with confirmation if this is a question you had. I am speaking today to some of you that are interested in healing their family, that are interested in breaking generational curses. This is starting already if it hasn't started and if you have had any dreams of earthquakes or the earthquakes are something that has been calling your attention, it's because the Lord is shaking that foundation and He wants you to build on the rock, build on grace, build on faith, build on His Word. Remember that nothing is out of God's control. He's Lord over the heaven, the sea, and the earth. So you want your business to progress, you want to be stable, you want a stable, steady, steady foundation, build on the rock, trust Him. He is the one who will provide in accordance to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. You want a stable, beautiful marriage. Remember, build on the rock. He's going to help you be as a tree-braided cord that nobody can break. Okay? He is the only one that can provide you with that confidence, with that safety. He is the only rock that you need to build the foundation for whatever it is that you want to raise up. Okay? I hope this message 
comes handy for you. And I can't wait to see it come to pass. I can't wait to see all your household be set free. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare salvation for all of your household. May a mighty spiritual earthquake break and destroy all prisons and all chains in your mind, in your dream life, in every possible way that are keeping you held in back from truly accessing the kingdom of God, for the grace of God is upon you. Let the Holy Spirit do it for you, because God loves you. He loves you. He wants you to come into repentance and receive Him, for He truly, truly loves you. May the Lord bless you abundantly. Bye.